All right. It says it says we are live. So we go. Hey, everybody! Welcome to another episode, live mm -hmm. episode of mm -hmm. Tranny and C. I'm Tranny. This is C. Hello. And we've got uh, Leo with us here. Leo Oppenheimer of Two Brewers and uh, Yukon Brewing. Leo, tell us who you are and what you do. Hey, everybody! Thanks for having me over here. Uh, yeah. So my name is Leo. I'm the Hand rep for Yukon Brewing in BC. So I live in Vancouver and represent the brewery and the distillery from my hometown here. And um, yeah, it's, it's been it's been a blast for the last few years. Uh, my sixth year on the job and still learning and keep on learning. So lifelong journey of learning in the whiskey world, it seems these days. And so you're representing both the whiskey and the beer side. Can you tell us a little bit about like, like how does, how does that work? How's this, how's the split kind of work there? Well, everything started with the brewery back in 1997. Oh, so wow. next year. Yeah. Next year, the brewery turns 25, pretty big accomplishment. Um, so we've been brewing beer for a whole bunch of years, and back in 2009 is when we purchased a still and started selling. So in my day-to-day -day job, I, I put a lot of effort, obviously, on both the beer and whiskey side of things. There's no real split in my time. I, you know, both the beer and the whiskey are made in the same facility by the same people. Uh, that own Yukon Brick. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a fun job. I really enjoy it. I like talking to people. I like showcasing our product. Uh, obviously now with COVID, it's been uh, a little difficult. Obviously we can't do any shows or festivals, which is a good way to meet people. But yeah, hopefully down the road, we'll be able to do that. And that's where we come into it. <laughs> yeah, it's a, exactly, we, exactly. We finally have a use. Yeah. Um, I got to say it's, <laughs> super convenient to brew beer uh at the distillery or vice versa because it's like you know so many distillers have to make their own beer anyways to make the whiskey so might as well take advantage of both aspects make them both yeah that's great exactly and yeah and then as we delve into the whiskeys later I'll, I'll talk a little bit about our process and uh where our brewery side of things comes in very handy when we distill and so, um, I, first off, I want to just, um, uh, say what an amazing dresser you are. I think that that's a fantastic shirt that you're wearing. <laughs> Thanks uh, very much. Nice. Steve. Um, yeah, are we kind of, uh, <laughs> did you call, did you call each other this morning? We did email so red yeah. and black. Yeah. Got red yes. and black lumberjack. I must've missed the message. We, we are twins from, from different mothers. Exactly. <laughs> and so tonight, um, uh, as you should know, or people should know, um, Two Brewers is in our Dram Club this month. And so we have sent samples out from these exact bottles. We are tasting along with our Dram Club members who I see are online tonight, uh, right now. And um, so they will be tasting along with us from the same bottle, which is really cool. And I got to say thanks to Rylan Maschak, who is actually online right now. He's saying hello, because I think Rylan actually recommended to you, Leo, that, that we should do a Dram Club thing, right? Yeah, it was a joint effort between Rylan and Briny, Briny of TS Global. Right, um, Briny's high, yeah. That is great. Briny and I met at our first ever whiskey show a couple of years ago. So we were uh, next door neighbors, and uh, <laughs> so we hilarious. kept that... Uh, whiskey friendship going and then Rylan yeah he, he's a great guy I met him here when he lived in Vancouver and uh when I was in Victoria recently we, we did a little uh drample wow. <laughs> drample I like that. As, as you guys are aware yeah so yeah. we appreciate uh both Bryony and, and Rylan's support here no yeah so thanks for for getting <laughs> us together here there's a bunch of people online already we're just gonna say hello to a few people and um Remember, we can't say hello to you until you say hello to us first because we don't know who's online until we see a comment. So, um, Jeff, the Whiskey Explorer, how's it going, buddy? He's a local uh, local whiskey enthusiast here. We've got Dram Clubber, uh, Joel Gossman, uh, Derek B is here, DMCKY, as I said, Ryland's here, uh, Tim Dietrich, uh, 
uh, Ben Demon Hunter, also Ben Dram Hunter, um, uh, Tommy Mizraji, and hi Leo, joining from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Well, well, yeah, hi, yeah. yeah, my good friend Tommy. Oh, awesome. Tommy from awesome Tommy from high school. Yeah, so I I should say I'm originally from Argentina. Oh, wow. I cool. I grew up in uh, Buenos Aires and moved to Canada many moons ago to study. Uh, I, I studied uh, a pharmacology degree in uh, Edmonton, the U of A. Hmm. And that's where my Canadian journey begins. Okay, uh, very cool. You, you know how it goes. Uh, you meet uh, your significant other. So I met my wife, Lise, who's from Winnipeg. And after studying in Edmonton, we moved back to Argentina for a little bit. But ultimately, we both wanted to come back to Canada. And uh, Vancouver was where we settled. Very cool. cool. Very cool. So, and so, um, how did you end up getting hooked up with two brewers out of the Yukon then? Yeah, that's a pretty neat story, too. I, I've probably told it a few times, obviously, not to you guys. But uh, uh, when I lived in Edmonton, um, I was surprised by the amount of craft beer. Uh, that was on the scene even back then. This was early 2000s. I was very early in the scene. Coming from Argentina, I was only exposed to, you know, your typical macro beers, macro lagers, you know, the equivalents of Molson or Labatt. Yeah. And the first beer that caught my eye in Edmonton was a beer called Arctic Red, which is one of Yukon Brewing's flagship beers, mm. now renamed Yukon Red. Okay. And Ever since then, I kept this, you know, this, uh, this appreciation for that beer and the story behind the beer and the brewery being up in Whitehorse in the Yukon. And when we moved back to Vancouver with Lee, um, I knew that I wanted to work in the brewing industry. I started from the ground up. I worked at a liquor store in West Vancouver for a bit, uh, you know dishing out beer, and recommending wines and spirits. And I was living in North Vancouver at that time. And there was a brewery that opened up in 2014 called Greenleaf Brewing, located in Long Silky area in North Vancouver. And after working there for a bit, I, I remember I reached out to uh, our marketing person back then in Yukon and said, you know, if you guys ever need somebody to represent your product, BC down the road, let me know. So I'll join you guys with the Rye IP as well. Yeah. So long gonna, story short. Pour, pour, we, you got to have a beer while you're telling a story, right? Yeah, exactly. Here's my fork. So always keep the glass 45 degree angle. That's what they say, sort of. Right? Yep. Mm. And then, Plus that nice IPA nose on it for sure. And one thing i know you're not done your story here but um <laughs> no problem we, you gotta love an ipa at 6.4 percent too so i we, we appreciate a nice uh high percentage ipa that's great high percentage yeah it's nice and moderately hoppy um so mm. same approach as we do with our whiskey for our beers while well, we like to brew our beers that we'd like to drink ourselves we don't go to the extreme level. Uh, we don't do extremely hoppy beers. We just want to brew stuff that we want to drink on a daily basis. So mm -hmm. this rye IPA is moderately hop. It's about 45 IBUs. Um, and we actually dry hopped it with uh, three different types of hops, uh, Cascade, Centennial, and Simcoe. So hopefully you'll find some of those notes, some tropical notes in there, some lemony notes. Right, I love that, and I like that it says uh, uh, "beer worth freezing for." <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's our uh, our logo, or not not our logo, or mo motto. Yeah. Motto. Um. So we're gonna get you to finish your story, but I just want to say hi to a few more people that have joined here because um people pe people keep jumping in here. So um, Paul Marco is here. Dave Gardner likes our shirts. Uh, Dusty Road <laughs> is here. Uh, Bill K is here. Cars and Cubes. Um, Steve Jobs is here. Whoa, that's pretty great. Wow. Um, 
Uh, uh, good, good crowd. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so on and so forth. So okay. So sorry. You're you're at now. You're at the brewery. You're working at the brewery, right? I'm out working at the brewery, and um, yes. yeah, we started. You know, uh, with our core lineup of beers, obviously. And as you guys might be aware, over the past few years, there's been a trend to can more and more beers, especially in this this type of format, our, our tall cans or the 473. Uh, so oh, over the years, we've been brewing more and more seasonal beers. Um, so yeah, it's been really exciting. We have a, a wide variety of flavors. We have classic style beers. We have our, you know, our amber ale. We have our old English ale. It's very much like a porter, nice and dark. So uh, is this considered a seasonal one, or is this going to be a mainstay yes. in the lineup? Uh, no, this is a seasonal beer. Uh, we seasonal we've, right there. Oh, it says seasonal. Sorry. <laughs> it says yeah, limited. Yeah, limited release or seasonal. Uh, we had this beer last year, I believe, but it was uh, in the bomber format. Okay. So the, the six fifty mil bottle. Yeah. So now we're moving most of our seasonal beers in four seventy three so, mil format. As you've been talking there, I've I've had a couple of sips of this, and it is, I, it's not so heavy in the hops and the IPA kind of style. It's nice and creamy, and it's it's but it has, really really refreshing. But too. it has like, a, and that nice kind of like IPA kind of bitterness that you that you look for, and this a bit of citrus and it, yeah, it kind of also it, <laughs> it, it, I don't I don't want to say it's matches a lager refreshingness too though like it's not just a dry mouth kind of yeah it's not a harsh idea yeah yeah um exactly one other thing is that i've been doing low carb for a long time now and it is very rare for me to get into a uh like a regular beer real good and (laughs) and this this is is a real (laughs) treat like this is this is good that's awesome i like to i like to to get my carbs on something like this yeah if you're gonna I'm getting my carb on now yeah, <laughs> might good. as well be something good like that yeah well happy to hear you guys are enjoying that yeah, yeah so that's good. great very good so Sorry. i before before i finish i should say uh thank you to to dave gartner so dave also known as yukon dave he's our our rep in alberta in edmonton and it's most likely thanks to him that i was able to try that beer ah. all those many years ago out at that restaurant Oh, cool. Cool. Well, thanks for that, Dave. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for making it happen. Totally. So now I don't know um, what tradition dictates, but I feel like sometimes a pint and a dram at the same time is like one of my favorite things in the world. Now we're, so, yeah, now we're talking. So I'm assuming we'll start with release 22. I'm That's guessing. Right. Um, yep. Before we do that. He's still not done telling you. Oh, story. sorry. You're not done. I'm sorry. I keep interrupting. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm done. So I, I, I've been, I've been very fortunate to be in this role. And uh, even though last year was a challenging year for a lot of people, um, those in the brewing industry consider ourselves very lucky because we've been able to keep working and uh, provide tasty treats for you guys to, to consume Amazing. along the, the yeah. last year. So I'm, I'm very uh, happy to be in this industry and, and. Definitely grateful to the people up north to give me this opportunity. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you know what? Um, so let's pour the twenty-two. Okay. Let's yes. pour the twenty-two. We've got. Uh, that's is that a clean one? You got the clean. Yep. Oh yeah. I, yep. Okay. So here I'll pour you a twenty-two. Uh, kind of close. So there's to the there's a uh, release twenty-two. And this one we found like I mean it's titled innovative, and we mm. found the flavor to be so fun and interesting and unique and like just plain tasty altogether. But I mean, it's, it it's, was very unique and innovative, as you said. It is so unique. Like, I don't know. So our dram clubbers have this right now and yeah. they're probably sniffing and drinking along, but it's, I think, have we released that video yet? Uh, yeah, I think we did a 30 second review and a full review. On so the full yep. review was the first time that we had kind of cracked it open and it's mm. first impressions and all that kind of thing. And to be honest, it like really stumped me because <laughs> it's not just the, a classic Canadian style 
like high corn content kind of mm-hmm. vibe to it. It's got so many different like mm-hmm. spices on the nose and but like but it, it was single high, but it is single fruity. malt yeah. and fruity and almost like it I don't know. There's just so much going on on there that but it's really hard to kind of pinpoint. It's so let's it's talk very about, unique. Yeah, let's talk about a couple of really cool factors about your whiskey though is that non-chill filtered no color added. Um, this one comes in at 51%, right? So we're checking a lot of the boxes that we talk about. We talk about checking boxes, right? Like when you're looking for a good whiskey, non-chill filter, no color added, higher than 40%. Like those are the things that, that you're looking for. So yeah. you nailed De- a decent price point too. Yeah. Really. So you've nailed a few of those things. So tell us a little bit about this one and like how it how it came to be and how it's made. Absolutely. So I don't know if you can see with uh, on the banner that uh, where am I? Got to move around. Here. Yeah. Remember, everything's backwards on here. <laughs> everything's backwards. <laughs> so if you could, when you open the bottle, you probably notice a neck tag on the bottle. Yeah. And basically, there it tells you, it, it gives you an idea of the four main families that we categorize our whiskey in. So we have yes. our classic style family. We have our seated family special finishes is innovative. So in this case, release 22 is an innovative because we bring some of the brewing techniques into the distilling world. So release 22 is based on a sour mash. Okay. Uh, very similar to what they do in the state, you know, a Tennessee whiskey or a bourbon, uh, but also similar in the brewing world with uh, kettle sour beers, mm. sour beers. Okay. So we started with three different uh, sour mashes, which make about 90% of this whiskey. Hmm. And uh, the ABV, as you mentioned, is 51%. Um, it's hmm. very unique on the nose because of, of, the, of the yeast and uh, fermentation process. But also it has some unique flavors as well because we actually finished the whiskey in American rye whiskey barrel. Mm. So, so I noticed you guys. Rye yeah, whiskey. I noticed. So okay. that, that's, that makes that's a lot of sense. That's got some of the fruity yeah. influence. Like it's got so many cool things about it. Like there's almost this like menthol kind of thing. There's a big fruity thing. And then there's what I always call is like the Fig Newton kind of of a, of a single malt, you know, like. Mm-hmm. There's so much, I mean, it's so, just such a fun nose. Like, it's maybe, really maybe interesting. It's, maybe this is a dumb question, or you answered it, and I was zoning out a bit. Um, <laughs> there are no malt, dumb questions. Single malt, is it 100% malted barley? In this case, it's 100% malted barley. Okay. Uh, Canadian regulations are a little bit different than Fox whiskey regulations. So we, most of our whiskeys are barley-based. There was one or two whiskeys where we added uh, some malted rye, and we are working perhaps down the road to add some malted wheat as well. But we can oh, still cool. call we can still call that a Canadian single malt whiskey. Yeah, because it's uh, we use malted grain, and it comes from a single distillery, right? Right. Mm. But so, yes, yeah, if it were, so there's no like um, mash style. Like mash like bill, mash bill, and there's also no, I guess, like some other Canadian whiskeys where they, well, if it's single malt, you wouldn't do it that way, they but age separately. separately but yeah. That, yeah, so this is straight so, up. This is straight up, yeah. So I think that's what process. makes this really unique, honestly, because like single malt in Canada isn't done very often, and then mm-hmm. just I think that rye barrel really has a huge influence on the. So this is Paul Bovis is here. He's one of our Dram Club members. He says, I'm getting a two brewers private cask bottling soon. Very excited. Oh, heck yeah, buddy. Heck yeah. Awesome. So sorry, yeah. keep going, go on more about the, uh, the 20, I, I, yeah. I keep interrupting. <laughs> um, so yeah, release 22. I got a little cheat sheet here. Hmm. I won't show it fully. This is um, a table that uh, Alan, our distiller, uh, sends us which basically tells us, salespeople, uh, the percentage age of the blend. Because you will notice on the bottle that uh, we don't put our age statement, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. It says release 22. It gives you all sorts of details, but it doesn't say, you know, is this a seven-year-old, is this a five-year-old, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So what happens with our whiskeys is that they're generally a blend of different single mashes. 
okay. and different age components within those masks. So on this little table, for, for those of you that are interested, uh, four different single mashes constitute a release 22. And the age percentage is 52% is a five-year-old whiskey, 9% was an eight-year whiskey, 39% was a nine-year-old. Oh, okay. Wow, okay. So as the years go by, go by you'll see more and more older expressions. Right. Because, you know, we first started distilling back in 2009. So is it the same in Canada where, like, if you if you wanted to put an age statement on this, you would have had to put five years on it because that was the youngest? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You put the age statement, and if it's a blend of different age components, you have to put the youngest. Which, in a way, it's like people love to see the age statement, but that doesn't really do it justice if you have 39% of nine-year-old, right? So it's like, it's is it a five-year-old? Well, that's that's the youngest that's in it, but there's a good portion of it that's nine years old. Yeah. So you're kind of under, yeah. underselling yourself a little bit, right? Exactly. And uh, we had a, a recent release, um, release. 18 which was only available for sale in the yukon and i think maybe maybe dave got some bottles in alberta as well that was a single cast cast strength release and uh that was an 11 year old whiskey so <laughs> all the liquid in that bottle is 11 years old i gotta so, say um drinking this rye ipa having a sip and then chasing it with <laughs> a sip of the whiskey is like that's really good it's that a good combination. Yeah. Super they, they really, really suit each other. Yeah. <laughs> this this you, this night this night could go sideways really fast. <laughs> see this wait wait till we go live after this and we do the post game show. Yeah, there's an after party, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. Man. Yeah. Look For out. the after party, I have uh I just got in the mail uh a bottle of release twenty five, which is the next whiskey that you will see oh. in BC. And oh, that's right. uh that's a peated. Okay, when does that come on out? Uh, so it should be available in a few weeks' time. Uh, we're doing uh, things a little bit different with the sales process and DCs, thanks to the liquor board. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm taking free orders right now from, from different liquor stores. For so are yeah. you guys only in private stores right now? We are mostly available through private stores for the beer side. Uh, for the whiskey side of things, over the last few years, we took part in different spirit releases from BC liquor stores. Right. Yeah. So release 23, which we'll sample next, that was part of last year's spirit release. Gotcha. And you're at um, the beer I got it at Liquor Plus. Yes. So on Vancouver Island, uh, we have a, a good following. So Liquor Plus uh, has our beers and some of our whiskeys at most locations. Uh, Cascadia Liquor Stores is another good store chain. Mm -hmm. uh, Vinegars, James Fay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if any of the viewers have a question uh, about where they can get our product, I'll, I'd be happy to answer that. Uh, and so, is the best way to contact you? I know you're. I know you're on Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. Like, are are you the one answering the direct messages at Two Brewers and Yukon Beer on Instagram, or is that somebody else? Uh, no, that would be possibly Lee, who's our um, marketing and sales uh, assistant up in Whitehorse, okay. or Heather, who's our uh, director of marketing. So either or, okay. answer our Instagram page. Uh, I obviously answer the Bruheimer at Twitter feed. Yeah. But email is always best. My email is pretty simple. It's leo at yukonbeer.com. Cool. Leo at yukonbeer.com. Okay, that's that's pretty easy if people have questions. So yeah, send um, your questions the, that way. I I gotta interrupt this whole thing with mm -hmm. just having the first couple sips of this mm. um after nosing it for a little while. Like the the palate and the, the flavor on this is just so rich and there's like a sweetness and a mm -hmm. I, I did want to say rye spice, but now it, at least it makes sense. Right, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it's it's top notch, and I was I was wondering I was wondering what the uh, dram clubbers that are sipping along with us right now what their thoughts are because um, I personally when we first opened this one was taken aback like I said earlier where it's like I couldn't 
quite pin the tail on the donkey with this one. So <laughs> let's. We, I know Paul uh, Bovis. There's is, a bit of a bubblegum nose to it. Yeah, there is actually. Yeah. Um, there's, yep. Paul Bovis is on, who's a dram clubber. I'm just trying to see who's confirmed. That's on. I know Rylan was on, who's a dram clubber. I think Derek um, was on. Uh, any of the other dram clubbers that are live right now would love to get your tasting notes on the um, release 22. Yeah. And sometimes um, there's a bit of a lag in the, like, when we're talking, sometimes what they're seeing live is still a few seconds behind. So sometimes it takes like a minute for their uh, comments to come through. And but. sometimes dram club clubbers are East Coast and they're far asleep by now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, or as, as the case of my friend Tommy in Argentina, it's uh, getting close to one in the morning, I believe. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so for him. Here's an, he's, he's, that's a trooper right there. Here's a good point though. <laughs> DMCKY, sorry, Dram Club wait lister here. Yes, um, we do want to address the wait list for Dram Club. Um, there was, and you don't even know this, there was movement on the Dram Club oh. wait list Ooh. this month oh. for, for the first time in about six months. Um, so <laughs> the wait list did just you did just gain a spot if you're on the wait list um that being said we have a um some things lined up in the in the next few months that may allow us to expand the dram club so those of you who aren't on the wait list if you want to be included you should email us at trendyncy at gmail.com and get on the wait list because yeah. all of a sudden the mate wait list might be the list. Yeah, we, there's there could be a dram club A, dram club club B kind yeah, of situation. Yeah, there's, there's a lot going on. Um, so okay, I gotta actually say one thing since we're doing a little bit of self promotion here. <laughs> Sorry, Leo. We're always <laughs> doing self promotion. Yeah. But but that's all good. It's actually not so much self promotion. It's promoting other people. We have a couple of oh. giveaways tonight. Yeah, and um. Just so you guys are going to be sticking around, we'll be giving these things away. We should uh, give and, something away now. Maybe let's just give something away right now. So okay. here's yeah. what we got. We've got two of the new editions of the Davin de Carigmo, uh, the T Definitive Guide to Canadian Distilleries. Excellent, excellent book. Um, this, you can find out a little bit more of two brewers in here too. This book talks about every distillery in Canada. Yeah, and not just whiskey. <laughs> yeah, it's like it talks about every distillery. It's got some tasting notes in it. It's got all kind like you can get seriously learned up on Canadian whiskey by and, reading and this book. Also, just some really beautiful, uh, yeah, pictures, uh, and, pictures and like high, it's like glossy kind of photos and everything. And the it's book's nice. autographed. Oh, and autographed by Davin himself. Um, it's made Trini, and it says Trini and C in good spirits, Davin de Caragmo. It's made out to us, but you can have it. Um, so let's give it, get the randomizer out. Sorry, Leo, we're gonna give something away. I'm gonna, that's and, uh, great, perfect. I'm gonna just show people what else we're giving away okay. today. Um, this is very cool from two brewers. Mm. We have whoop, two sets of tumbler, two brewer tumbler with the water droppers. Mm -hmm. So thank cool. you for those, hey. Leo. Um, oh, you guys awesome. are very welcome. And the water dropper. You, you you got one of these yourself that you use, don't you? There, yeah. I got one right here. You bet. So we'll um we'll ship these out to. Uh, so are we giving one away, like three separate uh, draws? Well, there's four because we got two of the book. Four. Okay, perfect. Let's four. do two brewers. Uh, one of the one of each. One of these right now, and we should do one of these and a book right now. Okay, and then do one of them in a book later. Yes. Okay. So, so, and okay. One rule: you can only win one time tonight. <laughs> tonight. So, if you win, then you. If you win again, we got to give it to somebody else. So, and those who do not know, in yeah. order to win, all you have to do is sign up for our Patreon. Yeah. You can be as little as a dollar a month. Yeah. Um, and you, and you get into, everything. Entered into all the draws that we do, and we do a lot. Patreon.com slash Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay. We're going to the randomizer. So the randomizer all right. here, you will see, we have it from zero. From one. <laughs> for, from one to 340. And okay. 
uh, patrons, I emailed you your lucky numbers. So you can check your lucky numbers. So I'm going to do this right here. Here we go. Who's going to win it? What are we, wait, what are we giving away? The tumbler oh, first? We're going to give tumbler. away the tumbler first. Tumbler and, and water dropper. Combo pack. Oh, 111. That okay. seems like a good That's number. That's a good number. Nice number. So here we go. You got to go to the peak. Oh, one. Yeah. Uh, 111 is. Oh, Paul Bovis. Paul Bovis, who's online right now. Paul, awesome. congratulations. congratulations. Paul Bovis won. Paul Bovis won the Ardbeg um, Glen Karen's last wow. like, two weeks ago from uh, from Bry Simpson, I think. That, so that brat, <laughs> you are cleaning <laughs> up, Paul Bovis. Okay, let's give away a book. Who's getting the book? The okay. first book. Okay, hold on a sec. I just totally. Did you totally okay. mess up the randomizer? No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Leave it like okay, that. Leave it like yeah, that. It like so that. we're still at one eleven. Yeah. Okay. We're getting the. We're we're we're, we're just book. getting rid of everything here. <laughs> okay, one eleven. Autograph book. One forty. Okay, oh, who's that? who's that? Hopefully that's not Paul Bovis. No, you can't no. win again, Paul. <laughs> one oh. One. Quinn. Oh, Palmer. Quinn Palmer. Woo! Quinn Quinn Palmer won the um Belveni Doublewood twelve year old. When we were sponsored by Bell Benny. That's he's a, hilarious. Oh, he's time. a multiple winner now. Multiple okay. winners, yeah. Okay, wow. so we still have we still have two th two more give things away. to give so away tonight. We'll so do that in a little bit. Stay tuned. People are winning here tonight. This is this is really something, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we get excited. Um how are we doing for time? What are we? We're 30 minutes in. Okay, we're, well, that's we're not still bad. Good. yeah, nine o'clock. Perfect. Yeah, yeah we're good. Yeah, I just wanted to add for for release twenty two. Um, so the the sometimes we get a lot of questions, you know, what what types of barrels for two brewers. So uh, overall, we use a mixture of ex bourbon barrels and new American oak barrels. So in this particular case, with release twenty two, it was all second use barrel, and after blending and marrying the liquid. We finished that in American rye whiskey barrel from uh, Peerless Distilling in Kentucky. Yeah, so that's what, I, what adds that little spicy, spicy mm. rye note. I'm just like the more I get into it, like there's actually like a cotton candy kind of a nose on it too. Oh. Like there's so many things that just keep popping up. It's like burnt sugar or something. Yeah, like that. which yeah, is some cotton candy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, really some brown sugar, some cinnamon, exactly. Um. And so here's the thing about release 22 is that it's from August, 2020. So this one might be getting a little bit harder to find at 820 bottles. Right. So like, I mean, we're going to say right now, this is a definite buy. And we were just kind of whispering to each other that this it's is a, a contender. It's like, a contender. We, I mean, I know there's other whiskeys of the year that, seem important at the time but the training sea whiskey of the year yeah is really the important one that don't, people should look don't into. get lost in all those bullshit award ceremonies <laughs> like this is <laughs> this is this, this is the one of, this yeah. is the one you the, want the to training win. sea award yeah, absolutely exactly. yeah and it's a contender like this one is yeah it's always nice to be surprised by a whiskey because sometimes you you come into them and you're like okay you you love it of course yeah. but it's it's expected Mm -hmm. And sometimes being caught by surprise is half the fun, you know, like that's, totally. yes. that's what keeps you an enthusiast in the whiskey world because you find new flavors and new experiences, experiences and, yeah. and all that. And so new compartment, and that is, this is definitely like that checks. That's another box to be checked really unique. Yeah. 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 So anyway, yeah, and we, we should give kudos to, to Davin as well for, for running the Canadian whiskey award. Oh, absolutely. Um, we with with release twenty two we uh, got lucky we won a, a gold medal award, oh, uh, nice. and we shared the title with Shelter Point for best Canadian single malt year. Oh, yeah, what was the Shelter Point uh, release? I think was it was that the a Smoke Point. Smoke Point. I think it was the Smoke Point. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We've got that so, one. So, and Shelter Point's doing some really great stuff as well. Like in in a way, you guys are kind of like you're you're doing a um like a similar thing with a Canadian single malt non-chill filtered, no color added, 
higher percentages. Like we've said shelter point is putting out some really amazing stuff and it's awesome to see, you know, multiple um, distilleries kind of like following that same pattern or path. Exactly. Or like, not that you, not well, that you're the same, but like, it's no, least, no, we're not the same, but yeah, we're we are similar in certain aspects. You're, you're and, checking those same like quality boxes. Yeah, oh, and, and like, the, your mission statements are very, fairly similar. Like very, one thing that's <laughs> yeah. very cool about this, the t release twenty two, and well, I guess all of them is that when it's done, it's done. I guess exactly. So that's another another uh, key point for two brewers where no release. What we try to do is that no release is going to be the same as the previous release or the next one. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, they will be part of one of those four family categories I mentioned. So we will be doing more classic whiskey, more heated whiskey, but they're not going to be exactly the same as the previous right. or the next batch, right? Um, so if you particularly like this release 22, like you said, the, you know, go and get it because it we now. won't be making this again track it down but another point to what you're saying with the kind of the categories then when you become a two brewers fanboy <laughs> um you kind of like can pick which category you're you're really well, looking I'm a towards. real fanboy of the uh <laughs> so like, classic lineup so or like but yeah. like this being the innovative yeah you know, there's a two, uh, bre two brewers posse already so yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like <laughs> point being though is like then you kind of know what spectrum that whiskey category will fall under. And that's kind of a cool way to go about it, yeah. I think. Um, yeah, exactly. And and the innovative category is, is one of my favorites too, because it's very, very, very different. Um, so for example, this is release 22, or release 20 was an innovative as well. Oh. Uh, it was a whiskey that we ate in uh, barrels that previously hit, held maple syrup from Quebec. Mm. Cool. So very different flavor profile. Um, we also had a previous release, release 14, where we used highly roasted malt. So we had some chocolate malt, black malt. So yeah. flavor profile more on, on the lines of, you know, if, if you want to compare sort of to uh, Glenmorangie Signet, Signet, mm. a very dark roast flavor profile. Mm. It's and a so very fun cool. category to, to and play with. So so you guys have been doing whiskey for about 12 years and you are at release 24, 25 right now. That would say that you're kind of doing two a year, right? Like one every six months kind of thing, right? Uh, it depends yes. on the year. It depends yeah. on the year. Uh, last year, I believe we had four releases. I want to oh, say okay. four. Uh, release, yeah, 2021, 20, 22, 23. Possibly even release nineteen, which was our previous previous uh, edit category. But so yeah, are, it's are usually you, four or five a year. Now is there is there going to be more each year at this point, or no? I don't think that's the plan. The plan is to keep it uh, so far as as we're doing. So small batches. Uh, our batch size, as you can tell from the label in the bottle, mm -hmm. um, release twenty two was a kind of middle of the run batch. Uh, about 820 bottles. I think our highest batch was 1,700 bottles oh, for okay. one of our earlier releases. But yeah, we, we're the plan, as far as I know, uh, maybe Alan has other plans that I don't know about yet, but uh, it's to keep it, you know, small scale, small batches. And again, like no release is going to be the same. As the previous one. Very cool. Um, we should probably get into release 23 here. Mm -hmm. Let's finish that uh, the twenty two release and I gotta so say good. I'm gonna I gotta do one more the beer and then the twenty two because it yeah one more sip of beer mm -hmm. one more sip of the beer and then I I have this funny feeling it's gonna go really well with the twenty three as, as well, well. <laughs> we might need to crack another beer <laughs> yeah um it's just like I'm going to <laughs> it's like the the hoppy bitterness of the beer. And then all of a sudden, it makes the whiskey just taste like that much like sweeter and creamier. It's like I don't know. It's a, such a good compliment. Like it's a good combo. Yes. Yeah. What is it? There's the drink. Uh, isn't there a drink called the Boiler Maker? Where oh, yeah. you? Oh, yeah. we can just drop it right in there. Yeah, you, you Ooh, drop it. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so let's. Uh, I'm gonna pour up the release twenty three. This one. Yeah, I got a fresh glass here. So, mm, mm. 
Mm. The, I mean, you you can obviously tell us a lot more about this, but I'm just going to do a quick read off the bottle. Absolutely. Um, this is in the category, as we were talking about before, of the four categories. This is in the special finish finishes. So mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. And this one being a lightly peated style. But it's also sherry and port. Cast, oh, right? and sherry and port. Like, that's the so finish, many. Right? Yes. A lot yeah, there's... Here. The it's, it's 46%. I have to actually mention just with the release 22 being what was 51. Yeah, 51. 51 percent like that. That's a drinker. Yeah. You know, sometimes oh, yeah, it goes down when like it's such a high, easy. when things are high proof, it doesn't always, it's not crushable. As the we turn, like to call the it. Turn yeah. is crushable. That's crushable. That's super crushable. <laughs> a crushable 51%. Kind of really. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, so the special finishes category is uh, where we use specialty barrels for the finishes. So we do have at the distillery some quartz barrels, cherry barrels, of course. Uh, I believe we have some brandy barrels. So you'll see something finished with brandy over the next little while. Cool. And I think we'd also have some rum barrels. No, so no, you'll no. see a rum barrel finished down the road That's too. Cool. So oh, with so this rum, you're gonna do a you're gonna do a rum one as well. Yes, I think so. That's oh, the plan. Um, so with this particular release, or release twenty three, uh, what Alan was trying to do is to strike a balance between smoke, uh, fortified wine finish, both the sherry and the port, and also highlight our house malt here. Mm. So. You may, as, as you have different two brewers whiskeys, you may notice that there's a, a, a unique trend in, in the house malt character. So it's right. tro tropical, tropical nose, a grainy character. Yeah. Um, that's fruitiness. a great, that's, those are like great flavors for a house style though. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a, just give us a little bit of props because those are the two things. That, oh, those are the those tasting are the, notes we actually took. <laughs> the first things we're like, oh, it's actually like kind of tropical. Yeah. Right on the money. Yes, exactly. Yeah, our noses work. Yeah. So Ooh. this is very, yeah, this is very unique for for most of our previous special finishes. We never included uh, peat in right. whiskey, so they were either finished in ex bourbon barrels or uh, PX cherry barrel. So this is the first time that we added some peat, but also used uh, a double barrel finish with the port cherry. So can I ask, uh, I'm, again, I might have been zoning out, but when you add the peat, is it specifically to how you're, like, are you, is your, dis, does your distillery have a malting floor? You're saying, kind how of do you add the peat? How do you <laughs> add the peat, essentially? Or is it like a, a finish style, too? Yeah, so that's a good question. So for, for our peated whiskey, we actually source the peated malt from Scotland. Uh, we work with a commercial maltster uh, called Baird's Malting. They're, I think, near Aberdeen. And we just get the, the malt peated on spec. And from that, sometimes we do, you know, we have like 100% peat stock. And we draw from that and use some of that into our whiskey. So this is lightly peated. So mm -hmm. hopefully, you know, you'll get some of that peat aroma on the nose and on the palate. Um, and I believe in the total blend, the, the amount of heated liquid was about 25%. So okay. yeah, it's, it's a little bit on the lighter side, but it's definitely- say, it's a, it's a lightly peated nose. It's not in your face, which I think honestly, but it's, is, it's nice. is a positive yeah. thing but like because it mm -hmm. it matches the sweetness too it this one has a little bit more of um the scotchiness on the nose like it's a little bit more mm -hmm. reminiscent of of that style of you know of single malt, maybe right? a little like, bit more traditional single malt yeah. kind of thing but um yeah but it, you're it right. has definitely has the fruitiness the fruity characteristics that you're talking about right like yeah and the nice cool. thing the nice thing with this whiskey is that no, no note dominates the other note. So each yeah. note comes and, and has its turn, right? So like a really nice balance. It's a nice balance, absolutely. 
Um, well, that's one thing too. Like, this just goes to show where Canada is on the map now. I, I, like we've been saying for a number of years now that Canadian whiskey is the up and comer, even though like that that those days are <laughs> even though it, even though it's been doing it for a couple well, hundred years. It's but but I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, in the perspective of people like, like the world over, view. Over, <laughs> yeah. people would overlook Canadian whiskey, but there's just such a variety now, you know, because like Canadian whiskey isn't just one thing. There's right? something for everybody in the Canadian whiskey world where before I think a lot of people, and this isn't like harshing on anyone, any specific brand, but it was very designed for a mix of mixable drink what was crown like. the world knows crown royal corn yeah exactly you know and it's yeah. like canadian whiskey is so much more than you know the basic crown royal like no again what? not harsh on crown royal they do all kinds of really cool stuff but um mm -hmm. that's that's kind of like that massive product and Mass label appeal that's, kind of that's out there um whereas you have something way smaller batch that you know unfortunately you know, most likely no one south of the border is going to, unless they're in Dram you know Club, unless they're in Dram Club, they're not going <laughs> to try this. Let's actually talk about that for a second. Exactly. Um, what are, it, are these whiskeys in the United States? No, they're not. Um, yes. So we sell our whiskeys, well, in the Yukon, of course, in BC, in Alberta. And as of a couple of years ago, we started sending... Uh, I don't know if every release, but most of the releases to Ontario and Quebec as well. Oh, okay. People, people in the eastern part of the country can get their hands on our whiskey. Uh, oh. We haven't talked about the possibility of sending our whiskey to the state, uh, but ho hopefully I'm okay saying this. Maybe I'll get a, my ears pulled more by Heather, but... Uh, there is a plan to export our whiskey to a country in Europe, which we'll leave it. We won't name it just in case it's uh, still. <laughs> yeah. But uh, th there was a lot of interest from, from this particular country in Europe uh, where single malt is uh, one of Does the most popular. Does it start popular... with an S and end with a land? <laughs> <laughs> Does it start with an S and end in a scotch? It's, uh, scotch. Do you guys remember... <laughs> <laughs> let's let's give a hint. Um, it's not it's not the freedom fries. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, no. gotcha. So, so on the level, yeah, no, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, we don't want to get don't get them in trouble. No, no, let's not get them in trouble. Quebec, Quebec's uh, bigger brother. Okay, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, um, I think well, well, when the brewery first started, if I'm not wrong, uh, a couple of years into into the operation, we were sending beer to Alaska. So obviously Yukon and Alaska share a border. But uh, obviously the state has very different liquor laws than we do here in Canada. So right. at one point it proved very difficult to continue to do that. Well, okay, I got to say just, okay, talking about that they, uh, it's not in the States yet, but the whiskey community in Canada, I, I seem to, find two brewers being reviewed regularly like people in ontario uh of our you know our fellow influencers YouTubers, yeah. or youtubers or whatever um they everyone's just eating this stuff um, up. like they you love know it. who it's, it's just did fair. it was um whiskey whistle he just yeah. released one yeah mark yes. yeah mark just released one he's in winnipeg um, in Winnipeg, Whiskey yeah, the six loves it, and he's Ontario. Yeah, so I mean, the, yeah, I mean, um, people are growing a a real appreciation for the craft style when it's done. Like, do you know what? It's, it's, it's such a Canadian thing in my mind because I play music, and when bands tour, they have such a like a way harder time touring in Canada because the cities are so far apart less and populated, less population yeah. like there's maybe a little bit less of an audience but they're diehards and that's like yep. kind of thing right. what's very cool about something like two brewers and like the craft uh, distillery world in canada right now absolutely anyway absolutely. <laughs> <Anyways. laughs> i haven't had an ipa in a while so uh, <laughs> yeah it's really hitting us it's, it's um really 
But like, let's taste this for a second. Yeah, because yeah, let's get I just went. Here. I also went back and forth between the the beer and this <laughs> one. It also works very well. It works. I should try that too. Um, but these ones have more. These are a little bit on a closer wavelength than the last one because they both have a bit of a like a spice, a tart spice, a little bit of mm. kind of bitterness to them. Like these are these aren't. Like the other two were more on like different wavelengths. This one to me is a little close. Obviously, it's not you know it's it's a whiskey and a beer, but like they're closer. <laughs> but you know, there's pairings. They're there's cousins. Pairings. You know, they're cousins. You know, what absolutely. Did donut wouldn't go good with yeah. it. Is the real question. That's what we need to know. Um, okay, on the flavor of of the uh, release twenty three lightly peated, that light peat is it's a little bit more prominent on the flavor. It but is. it's still so it, it's like bright and refreshing and I, I really 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 like this stuff and like you said earlier though leo it's um it's not overpowering and there's no one flavor profile that's like really like blasting you exactly. with anything it's a really nice um balance throughout the whole palette like throughout the whole experience yeah it's a very nice combination of of you know the sweetness from the sherry from the port um and and the subtle smoke in there uh yeah. so the smoke and the pork give it a bit of a, that oaky stringency and then the, the sherry is very subtle across the palate as well yeah it's, it's well done so far i mean i will be honest these are the besides maybe a whiskey fest a couple of years ago when those were still legal yeah. um <laughs> i think we tried a little bit of two brewers yeah. But it's mm -hmm. it's whiskey fests are really hard because you get a little you just, lost, like you, you just get a, a little of a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's it's you know it gets a little foggy. It gets a little foggy. Yeah, because so, you, you know you want to maximize your time and oh uh, yeah, you want to try like, to approach all the different distillers. So yeah, it gets quite foggy. At the end of the day. And and our first our first whiskey fest about when there was like half an hour left to the whole thing, we're like, oh my god, there's another room. Yeah. But anyways, point being, uh, this is kind of our first delve into two brewers and <laughs> really impressed, super impressed. Yeah. And, and Thank you. we, and excited about it. Like we are like relatively, I don't say relatively, but we are honest about what we feel in our whiskey. And, uh, I think that's why our audience maybe hopefully connects with us because we're genuine about it. Yeah. So this is this is exciting stuff in my mind. We if if we didn't like it, we would have been like, "Hey Leo, why don't we just leave out release 23? <laughs> let's just talk about 22." You know, like Yeah, or or time's up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 30 minutes. Time's up. Yeah, there's nothing else to talk about here. Yeah. Um, but no, like both of these are just really impressive yeah like, totally well, I'm, I'm very happy to hear that and and again kudos go to to al alan hansen who's our head distiller he's he's one of the two brewers the other being bob baxter yeah um alan has a, a degree in chemical engineering so mm. obviously he likes uh he likes his chemistry and uh he likes creating these these two brewers concoctions that are they're pretty neat uh each like we said each each batch is different uh, from release number one to release number 23 that we're right now. I'd like to be a fly on the wall with him having a conversation with Dr. Don Livermore. Yeah, that totally. Would be, that would be <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> then there's us, like, they're engineering chemicals now? Yeah, it's good. Um, <laughs> so let's let's give some the rest of the stuff away. Sure, let's do it. This has, let's been, do it. This, this has been a lot of fun. So, um, Okay, so you've got the randomizer. Okay, I'll get the randomizer. Um, we have another set of two brewers, a uh, tumbler and water dropper here. <laughs> Let me put my beverage down for a second that I'm really enjoying. And uh, so we've got the tumbler. We've got the water dropper. This is a combo. Which, Let's... by the way, later on can double as like a two amp two ounce sample bottle you could you could be like you yeah can sweet. water drop sweet. and then you could sample it yeah. away. okay okay so uh again this is between one and 340 and if you we are, are still on 140 and which was the last winner if you've already won you cannot win again 
Okay. Yeah. So here we go. Let's do it. Randomize. This is for a tumbler. The tumbler and water dropper. One thirty-one. That might right. be some Palmer. That again. might be the same. Might be somebody else though. Might be somebody else. That is Quinn Palmer. We're okay. Do sorry, that Quinn. You can only win <laughs> once, buddy. Okay. Here we go. Let's keep it going. Forty-five. That's 45. someone different. Number 45. Oh, okay. So, Cameron Antonio. Cam oh, first time winner. First time winner. That's Cameron Antonio. Awesome. That's great. So, congratulations. That's great. Congratulations, Cam. Well, that's if, awesome. If you like to be cam called Cam. Um, cam Tonio. <laughs> okay. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Let's. Uh, so, for a book. For, for the book. book. Let's do the, the book. Final here. book. Um, where is my the other right? book is also autographed by Davin de Kergamo. So, like, how often do you get an autographed version of the from the author? I mean, and maybe we can sign it. No, I put a sticker in it. Oh, <laughs> that's good. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> no, I'll put a sticker in it. <laughs> we'll just devalue it. Yeah, we don't want to act. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, we're on forty-five. Here we go for a book. Davinder Kergamos. Dun, 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 dun. Another guy, Canadian Distilleries. One eleven again. Okay, we got it. Oh, one again. Oh. We got to go another one here. Is that Paul Bowles? Yeah. Okay. This thing's rigged. 272. Oh, that's what you knew. 272. We're on the total higher end of the spectrum here for a book. 272? 272. 272 is first name only. Lisa. Liza. Liza. Oh. <laughs> Liza. First time winner, Liza. Okay. <laughs> um this that is has. great. That's awesome. So it's, it's nice to have new winners because it spread it, the love. Spread the love a little bit. And in reality, like if you play Lotto Max or whatever, your chances are very slim. Quite where slim. this is, it's what one in three hundred or something. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, yeah. And the prizes They're are pretty good. Almost, odds. Yeah. The prizes are almost as good as Lotto Max. Way better. Yeah. Better. Yeah, I'd say better. Yeah, maybe yeah. better. I mean, <laughs> If you're a whiskey enthusiast, these like money are comes, money goes. Like whiskey and books, they yeah. stay they're they're around forever. Yeah, books are books knowledge. Are, that yeah. is for forever. <laughs> um, this has been a lot of fun, uh, Leo. Hope you enjoyed yourself because we certainly have. Yeah, I feel yeah, like I've I talked over you the whole time, and I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. No, I had a lot of fun. I appreciate you guys having me on the show. Um, no. well, well, it's been well, awesome. Yeah. We'll invite you back when we don't talk so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have been hanging out with though, very much lately with the COVID and all, so it's like yeah, it's super <laughs> awkward yeah. just talking to people. <laughs> you got to wear um, the same shirt, though. Yeah, exactly. Yes, absolutely. Well, next time, for yeah, sure. Trendy we'll, as well. I'll, I'll get the memo next time, I think. And thank you to all of the um, Dram Club members and patrons and all the people that joined us live tonight because we had a pretty solid audience throughout. Yeah. Um, and I know there's a lot, probably a lot better and more intelligent conversation happening in the comment section. Um, <laughs> but you know what? It was, great, it was great having them all here. So, Leo, if you don't mind, if you could stick around, uh, we are going to end the show for tonight. And just a reminder, we're coming back live one week from today with um, a few spirits and Paul Letko, the distiller at Few Spirits. They were our co-sponsor of Dram Club this month. And we are giving away a bottle. Oh, show off the bottle. A few rye. It's right there. <laughs> giving away this bottle next week. It's trying to see edition. Throw the show the see. We put a sticker on it. Hey, awesome. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. Um, thank you, everybody. And Leo, hang out for a second. Leo, what, what, yeah. Leo any last words to yeah. our audience or anything that you want to say, just so we don't completely no, talk over you? Thanks very much uh, to everyone who joined us tonight, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed both releases or if you had another two brewers release kicking around um if you have any questions on the particular whiskeys or where you can source these please feel free to reach out again my email is leo at yukonbeer.com and uh I'd be happy to help out so thanks again Perfect. and Perfect. cheers thanks so much buddy. all right cheers everybody okay salute cheers see you next week everybody <laughs> now we gotta figure out how to end this <laughs>